A pre-dawn fire raised through a dormitory housing more than 150 pupils at the hillside in the Russia Academy in Nyeri County. Police said the bodies recovered at the scene were burnt beyond recognition. Over a dozen others were rushed to hospital with serious burns. The cause of the fire was not immediately clear, but a team of investigators was dispatched from the capital Nairobi to probe the incident. Kenya's National Gender and Equity Commission said initial reports indicated the dormitory was overcrowded in violation of safety standards. What we know up to now is that some of the children tried to escape the tragedy and they ended up uh, being um, hosted by neighbors and the community around. Kenya's education ministry said in a statement that the school had over 800 students. All the fire victims were boys in grades 4 to 8, putting their ages at about 9 to 13 years. The government of Kenya sends the deepest sympathies and condolences to the families whose children have lost their lives or have been injured as a result of the fire. This is not the first such incident in Kenya, which has a history of school fires, with some turning out to be arson. In September 2017, 10 students were killed in a fire at the Moe Girls High School in Nairobi. A schoolgirl was later sentenced to five years in jail for manslaughter after being acquitted of murder. In 2012, eight students were killed in another school fire in Homerby County in western Kenya. The deadliest incident occurred in 2001 when 67 schoolboys were killed in a dormitory fire at Changuli Secondary School in eastern Kenya. Daniel Arabmoy, CGTN. Well, let's cross over to Enoch Sikolia. He's joining us live from the affected school, the Hillside and the Russia Academy in Nyeri in central Kenya. Enoch, it's been a day since the tragedy. What do we know at this time? British, I'll tell you what we have seen uh, since morning. Since 9 a.m., we were here at uh, the break of dawn here, and we've been seeing a lot of activity here since... Um, 9 a.m. when detectives arrived here, we've, we've seen um, um, officials from the homicide team um, domiciled at the Kenya's Directorate of Criminal Investigations who have been here. They are looking at many things. First of all, they are now in the process of recovering the 17 bodies that uh, were inside the dormitory at the time of the fire, but we have also seen them now um, trying now to also unravel. Remember, up to now, we are yet to understand, and even the government says it's yet to unravel what really caused the fire. So it's one of the things they are looking at. We have also seen um, members of the Kenya Red Cross Society and uh, um, aid workers from the county government of Nyeri, the local administration um, where the school is located, are actually trying to um, offer services to the affected families. We've seen a tent set uh, by the Kenya Red Cross Society. Um, they are offering counseling. They are also uh, offering medical services to the affected families. Remember, as we speak right now, uh, we are told that 13 uh, people are hospitalized, are still um, being treated at various hospitals here uh, in the county of Nyeri, 150 kilometers from where you are, Beatrice. Um, so it's um, a, a beehive of activity here from uh, detectives, medical officials. Uh, we have just seen also the government spokesperson who is inside uh, the school. Um, probably he will give us more details of what is happening today. So a long day here also we are waiting uh, just to get more information from the government as detectives continue with um, the investigation that they are doing today. Enoch, so we do understand that there are still about 70 uh, students unaccounted for. What do we know about that and what is the government saying are going to be the next steps from here? 
Well, Beatrice, as far as the information on uh, uh, the whereabouts of the 70 missing peoples, um, that information is still scanty. Uh, we've tried to talk to officials here. Uh, uh, they remain uh, dodgy about it. Um, but what I can tell you and what we have seen is that um, the Kenya Red Cross Society in the tent has placed a, um, a section where they are also trying to trace uh, the, the, the families. I've actually talked to one of the residents uh, here and he has told me um, that some of the villagers actually rescued some of, of the peoples. They are sure that they went with some of, of the residents. So what they are not sure is where those who are rescued by the residents are uh, and they are also actually, besides the government, these residents are saying that and calling to, uh, calling upon their colleagues, people from the, the village here who might know the whereabouts of the 70 missing uh, peoples to come forth and uh, volunteer, uh, not volunteer, but come forth and bring um, forth the information they have about the missing people. So. It is a wait and see to get the information from the government spokesperson. I told you he's just uh, he's in the, uh, in the school compound. So we are waiting to see what probably he can give us more details and more figures. But as we speak, that information is still very scanty, Beatrice.